Hello everyone. Greetings. Greetings from the Buddhist Art Gallery in Berkeley, California. So this is Anil speaking and um, I'm just very grateful today. I hope my sound quality is good. I'm just grateful today to share something about uh, about the painting that I'm very passionate about and also the uh, the meaning of uh, Buddha of infinite compassion and how we can uh, practice in our in our daily life um, so first of all I would like to welcome everyone my new friend old friend friend that I have not seen who are near and far greetings from my heart to you and uh, <clears throat> so this is uh, Berkeley um, it's the it's California so from here I'm trying to send uh, this teaching to all around the world and I'm just very grateful that I will I'm able to use this technology and uh, share something my personal experience and um, and the teachings that I'm very passionate about and the artwork that I believe that it has an enormous amount of quality that can bring some harmony to this world so uh, behind of me you can see the art over here um, it's the Buddha of compassion which I'm gonna talk about um, Before, before I before I talk, I want to go a little bit about uh, a small meditation practice. A small meditation practice that uh, maybe uh, to take a little moment of uh, gratitude to our parents. According to the teachings, no matter what we do, we cannot pay uh, the the debt, the karma the kindness that our parents have given us so let's take a moment of a gratitude to our parents to their kindness without them we will not exist and then to the gurus the spiritual teacher who are in a many different form many different tradition many different places let's pay gratitude to all those teachers for their teachings for their wisdom for the light that help beings to see through all the illusions and let's take a moment to appreciate the elements elements of the fire elements of the water elements of the wind elements of the earth elements the space that we exist so after taking the elements as our base, I would like to welcome this uh, Facebook Live uh, teachings about about Buddha of Compassion and the meaning of the Tonga paintings. Um, as you have probably seen and uh, been seeing that I, I'm posting a lot of uh, different uh, posts about the paintings that I'm very passionate about. And please comment here where are you watching from so that I can know how far this video have reached and also to initiate this I would like to offer my flute so that we can have more more flavor on the on this elements so This uh, the flute is the initiation, and uh, 
there are a couple of different um, things happening as I have been sharing that I'm going through a little transition and this is this transition is so clear so clarity in my mind that I'm very very uh, ha uh, very honor and very uh, grateful for this opportunity to have this mind in my in myself uh, for the last 20 years I've been doing paintings and artwork I get involved I got involved but uh, now is a really the time to go uh, deep into my practice uh, because uh, in this way I can more examine uh, more deeper of my own understanding and uh, as you uh, probably many seen that a lot of time you know um, I, I, I believe and I follow the traditional uh, philosophy of changing my own self on the path um, and so um, coming to this conclusion that I need some time to uh, to to do my contemplation uh, meditation it's it's as clear as the clear sky so I'm very grateful for my spiritual practice and for all the all the teachers that uh, that help me and all the beings all the friends and all beings that have helped me on this journey and so and I've been sharing this uh, post about the gallery that uh, either we want to uh, we want to hand over to someone or we're gonna close it at the end of the and uh, I hope in the beginning of uh, of uh, uh, in the middle of 2019 so I'm looking forward to whatever the whatever the universe it's uh, it's giving me an opportunity to unfold this unknown path that I'm I'm hoping to follow and uh, and and just accept the the unknown state or unknown path that I'm very I'm very grateful and so the one of the fundamental reason that I wanted to share this is the meaning of uh, of a Buddha of compassion or the Buddha of compassion today it's a uh, it's first I want to share something about the Tonka paintings before I share about the Buddha of compassion uh, that so the Tonka paintings are uh, as 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 um, are very 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 important in the practicing of the Himalayan uh, Buddhism uh, because it is it is the one of the fundamental object where we invoke uh, the deities not only through the image itself but through the practice. So while you are drawing the paintings, you actually invoke a lot of different mantras, a lot of different um, invocation syllables, the chantings to invoke certain deities on the on the um on the artwork and in during the process of making a painting sometimes you become one with the with the deity you become one with the buddha you become one with the different female buddha male buddha you become one because the quality between you and buddha is nothing different so one of the really reason i wanted to include this live is also i wanted to share with you there is nothing different between uh between you and the buddha the only different between you and Buddha is the illusion and sometimes we need certain kind of image certain kind of practices so that we can unfold those illusions so that we can access that nature and what is the meaning of Buddha nature is to become one with your true self to become one with your with your with your nature to become one with your nature is the Buddha nature. To become awakened, to become fully aware. You can imagine yourself that in 24 hours, how many hours or how many minutes you are fully conscious. You can actually just examine yourself in your whole day today or tomorrow. You can just be aware that you can just be try to be aware while you're in the bathroom or you are reading or you're talking or you're eating or you're walking, driving or anything. So just try to be aware how long you are just aware and a lot of time as we know that in the evening we don't even remember who we meet and um, what we did sometimes so um, so to be fully aware of whatever we are doing it's called Buddha so the the meaning of the Tanka painting is also to come to make it closer understanding to make it to make it more familiar to make it more to make it more known of that hidden uh, nature uh, that we we are all uh, we all have 
And so the Tanga painting, the meaning of Tanga painting is to make you more familiar of that, of that uh, unknown, enlightened nature. So that's why in the Himalayan region, there are a lot of different ceremonies are done, uh, hanging of really large paintings, very large, uh, maybe 30, 40 meters, a really large paintings to remind yourself that you are never separated from uh, the, the the enlightened nature. And also in the Tibetan word, the tanka is meaning is a tongdrol, which also I've been sharing. It is the meaning of uh, what is it called? Uh, it's the meaning of uh, uh, liberation through seeing. So when you see the images, you have certain kind of a uh, realization, certain kind of a uh, certain kind of uh, um, thoughts, uh, 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 certain kind of uh, realization occur. Uh, during the viewing the Tanka painting. So Tanka paintings is is very very important to the Himalayan tree. I've been um, I've been sharing my uh, in aspiration my interest of hoping to open a Himalayan art research institute back in my homeland Nepal so that I can more bring that uh, essence the teachings into more this world as much as possible because i personally believe that this art have enormous amount of quality to help awaken uh, people and especially i am in california and a lot of people we are known that this in the modern world uh, there is a possibility of confusion is more and more arising the reason is there is a you know when you are too much externally uh, attached then it's more and more confused arise and the more you internally connect then more clarity arise so uh, I, you know as I was uh, you know I was in New York some time ago and as you walk in around the uh, Times Square there's so many screens like suits bags lipsticks and all that thing ev everywhere so you are actually so much pulled by this external external uh, things that you get confused about what is the reality what is because you so much di uh, divert your mind into more confusion and that's why even in this modern developed countries where where the facilities are well well available for people who for example for me i'm from nepal and the facilities in nepal are very less than in the modern countries and even though you have a, we have the modern facilities here in the in the modern countries, but the de, but the uh, but the percentage of the depression and uh, anxiety and frustration and um, this mental problems are more and more increasing. And in in the teaching of uh, Buddhism, uh, the mental problem, mental thing is the fundamental thing. Uh, it can create you, as we have been discussing the, that. Uh, Either mind can, um, you know, mind have that quality that you can actually experience heaven in hell, or hell in even in heaven. I was talking with somebody, somebody that even if your mind is not healthy, even if you are in Hawaii, or if you are in somewhere, you cannot really, uh, really be happy because it, because your mind is taking over. So the mental is the very, 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 very important. More than a physical is the mental. So mind training. The meditation contemplation is very very important because you can change your whole circumstance your your whole energy by just thinking just by thinking you can transform almost everything that's why the Buddha was telling that uh, you are what you think but the problem the problem is we have so many things to think right in the modern world there is so many confusion because there's so many choices sometimes so I, I am very fortunate that I was born in Nepal and, uh, and the clarity of Nepalese uh, land, Nepal land is so, so beautiful. Uh, we are not, uh, we're not developed in a, in a, in a modern, uh, modern um, uh, what do you call it, infrastructure way, but spiritually it's very rich. And so this is my uh, really understanding about uh, 
the rich is because there is a lot of culture the rich is because there is a nature we become we there is a more access to the nature and more alignment and that's what i was also sharing with before because in the modern world you are more and more getting separate and i hope i can bring some more of this art to this world so that it can bring more alignment it can bring more it can more remember that we are never separated from like you see the water elements on the paintings there's a uh, there's a hills there's a clouds uh, there is this all elements we are never separated from the elements and so a lot of times people have to go through some um, many difficulties to experience that uh, but I hope I will bring more this art uh, to this world in a different ways uh, so that it can benefit more more and my 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 offering from this art would be go to the nature as much as you can and and uh, do meditation and uh, try to motivate your mind try to connect your mind do not do not separate your mind um, try to connect with your mind and the nature is the one of the best way to uh, to get uh, to get uh, to get access of that uh, if you don't have a nature around, it's always nice to create a sacred like altar in your space so that you can remember that you are beyond your just whatever self that you are identifying, you know, uh, you are identifying so that, um, so that if you create a sacred space, you are also remembering the different different beings and you are creating the sacred space in your heart. So saying that the Tonka paintings, I would say, have a, a very, very big uh, responsibility and a contribution to the world. And I hope I can expand this, my passion, my gift, my responsibility, my interest, and my um, gratitude uh, of these paintings to as many as possible and as much as possible and as long as possible. And uh, I am um, saying that I, as I have said, the importance about the Tonka painting, I would like to talk about the Buddha of compassion. So behind of me, there is a paintings of Buddha of compassion. Um, yes, you can ask me some question, but you can send me a message because uh, um, um, I don't know if I have enough time. But anyway, uh, yes, you can ask the question about the meditation. Um, so the Buddha of compassion right behind of me is the painting and when you see the Buddha of compassion uh, you also uh, you also suddenly have an exper experience of qualities that everyone have and everyone can develop and everyone is capable of developing uh, when you see Buddha of compassion we we kind of see our own self in the in the in the higher self our true self uh, when we see Buddha of compassion, we kind of remember our highest potential that one can develop infinite compassion, including ourselves and all sentient beings. And so when you see Buddha of compassion, also known as a Bodhisattva of infinite compassion, as uh, many of probably know, that uh, Bodhisattva is the being who have postponed their personal liberation um, to help other beings. So, uh, if you are anything doing something like that, you are uh, you are on a bodhisattva path, which which is also called the Mahayana path sometimes. Uh, but bodhisattva is is beings who are who are who are who have enormous amount of quality of loving kindness and compassion, and they postpone their personal liberation for benefiting others. So when we see uh, Buddha of compassion we also pay deep respect and gratitude because of their 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 kindness and because of their compassion um, they they are still here and we always uh, pay gratitude and at the same time we also remember that these qualities that we also have within ourselves and so we uh, in this particular paintings we call it the Buddha of infinite compassion Cheng Rizi in Tibetan and it is also called the Avalokiteshwara in Sanskrit and also uh, sometimes it's called Kuan Yin 
uh, sometimes people have a picture of Kuan Yin as a female but also Abalokiteshwar we have to remember that Abalokiteshwar is also um, what is that English word uh, androgynous androgynous beings who are who are neither male nor female um, so they have these qualities of so sometimes when you see sometimes Abalokiteshwara or Changrizi they almost look like a feminine a little bit uh, or masculine you know um, but um, in a Sanskrit term when we say Abalokiteshwar is a male Buddha of compassion and uh, he is the one who postponed uh, uh, going to his personal liberation for benefiting all sentient beings and uh, a lot of time one of the stories that they say um, that um, when he was looking towards the samsara the world um, of this transition that we are all in transition and the tears tears came from his eyes and from the tears it formed the lake and from the lake there was two beings came by called white tara and green tara and uh, so also sometimes the white tara and green tara are spiritual um uh, 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 spiritual beings from um spiritual beings that came through the tears so that represent also infinite compassion that's why the tara mother tara are also uh, representing the infinite quality of wisdom and compassion and particularly this one we have um, uh, when we see uh, we have four different hands so the four hands the two hands in the together and the two in the side so these two hands um, the four hands represent the four immeasurable immeasurable of you cannot measure uh, immeasurable love compassion equanimity and joy and love um, this this the four immeasurable qualities that uh, that uh, that one can develop or one uh, the, the bodhisattva have that qualities and uh, in the in the one hand he's holding a lotus flower which also represent the purity the mind of all sentient beings in the essence is as pure as lotus flower and one hand is carrying a rosary a mala beads that usually we carry as a practitioner uh, we carry as a, a symbol of continuity of, uh, of life and continuity prayer for all sentient beings and in the middle is carrying the chintamani chintamani it's a, in english it's be translated as a wish fulfilling jewels wish fulfilling jewels um, that we have in our heart so from the heart that the many things can be manifested um, uh, already okay so the from the heart it can be manifested everything outside so from the heart from the heart everything is it's is the heart is considered the center center of the center of the, your center of the um, center of the uh, center of the universe or of the center of the body anyway this is the heart we have so and also the Bodhisattva is wearing this all different ornaments the crowns they are they are representing that uh, they are never separated from the worldly world um, and also it is represented the all, uh, everybody who are on the path of bodhisattva usually they wear this kind of a um, royal uh, um, royal uh, ornaments and cloth from the world so uh, bodhisattva are the one who always in the world they are working in the world to benefit other beings and uh, the powerful mantra the powerful mantra, one of the most powerful mantra in the practicing of the Himalayan Buddhism, that are dedicated to um, to the to the Abhilokiteshwar is the Om Mani Padme Hum. So Om Mani Padme Hum is the Om Mani Padme Hum is a six-syllable mantra, and in six syllable there is many 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 meaning that six syllable many meaning of six syllable but i want to give a little sort of short information about the six syllable so in buddhism uh, the world is divided into six different realms which is the transition of the life we have a heaven we have a demigod we have humans we have hungry ghost we have animal and we have hell so we have a six different realm of life and in the six different realms of life there is a continue of like a a circle of uh, suffering or the circle of transition is like a continue coming back to the same circle and so when you say six syllable Om Mani Padme Hum 
we also send Om transcend uh, the all beings from the heaven. Ma transcend all beings from the demigod. Ma ne transcend all beings from the demigod, uh, you know, human realm. Pad uh, rep, uh, in transcend all beings from the hungry gods. Me transcend all beings from the uh, animal realms. Hum transcend all beings from the hell. So when we say Om ma ne padme hum, you are also, asp your aspiration is to may all beings transcend, may all beings be liberated, may all beings uh, be free from suffering and the cause of suffering. So the Om Mani Padme Hom is the most powerful mantra uh, in the practicing or developing the compassion within ourselves. So without the developing and compassion within ourselves, there's liberation is impossible. Uh, without... Uh, there was a saying that without the bodhicitta, the liberation is impossible. Without the loving kindness, the liberation is impossible. So how do we develop loving kindness? It's to, of course, sometimes you can give, you can give action work, but what about your internal heart? You know, sometimes people think about their giving, but as long as you have an ego, uh, because sometimes you feel like uh, you give something and you have an ego that, oh, I gave. You know, so the ego is involved. So be careful with that. As long as you give without, without any expectation, that is what the bodhicitta, that's what compassion means. So when you give anything without any expectation, which is one of the hardest things right now, because you know every time we do anything, there's expectation is involved. Either in the relationship or in the life or in the work and everything, you know, I get this much money and that much money and everything is just, expectation is all there. And um, well, I would say nothing wrong, but uh, try your best to do as many as things as possible without any expectation because in this way you will you will have less um, less pain you will have less uh, heart in your life because the more expectation you put in externally then you know the more the more external there, that's why there is a saying you cannot change external things but you can change internal things so that's why one of my friend was saying um, I declare myself that I am a peace and my peace cannot be destroyed or can be cannot be disturbed by any external things because you know if you allow sometime it is it is good to be a more open vulnerable but at the same time you know it, you have to be learn you have to learn how to filter so that it doesn't really because sometime the energy comes and it try to disturb you and sometime it is not your energy it is somebody's other emotions that's passing by and sometime we get stuck into that and you know make all the stories and many many all the things so um, without a developing uh, bodhicitta or compassion the liberation is impossible and so when you look at the Buddha of compassion he is an embodiment of infinite compassion and that we have inside ourselves and so um, these beings Bodhisattva beings, which there are thousands, thousands of beings in many different forms, many different realms. They are continually working to uh, benefit others. And um, we all have that quality within ourselves. Um, that's why I want to conceal this uh, live video. I don't know how long this went, but uh, I want to conceal this, this saying, the last word that was given by Buddha himself to the people. What was the last word? What was the last word that was given by Buddha himself was Appa Deepa Bhava. Appa Deepa Bhava. Appa Deepa Bhava. Which means you are the light. Discover it. You are the creator. You are the creation. You are. So paying the, all the gratitude to all the master. May you find the light within yourself. May you find a way to connect your Buddha nature within yourself. May you find a way to connect back to all the elements. And uh, I really want to request all of you who are watching this um, to, to take a walk in the nature and also write down the comments where are you watching from, which, uh, which country, which place, uh, so that I know um, how far this video have reached. And saying that, I want to just to a small offering, offering to all beings for their kindness, and I want to conceal this chant, this live video, with this.
Sadhu If you have any questions about this video, about the painting, about Buddha of Compassion, feel free to question and I think my my website is gonna work one more year so feel free to visit if you have any um, question about the paintings and just feel free to send me message if you have any questions saying that I want to say thank you so much for joining this live and I hope to go live more often and share my own experience some teachings and thank you so much for for being together. Omani Padme Hum.